In this video, I want to look at the next app for chapter 18, which is 18.2, the element quiz. I'm here in the intro to app development with Swift. As I mentioned in the previous video, we're going to build these from scratch using Xcode. So you can certainly read this chapter on your own, but I will walk through all of the steps for us. So let's go ahead and go to Xcode and let's create a new Xcode project. This is also going to be a single view application. We'll choose next. Now for this one, let's go ahead and call this element quiz. Press return or click next. And then here we're going to save it wherever you're familiar with it. I'm keeping mine on the desktop. Okay. Let's go to the main.storyboard file. And again, let's change the layout that we're going to reference and let's go to the 4S. We want this adaptive across multiple devices. And the best way to do that is to create your UI for the smallest device that you want to support. Now you don't necessarily have to support the 4S, but it's still out there and Apple is still supporting it. So you might as well target a device that is still out there and you'll get more users because it'll work on more devices. So we have this set. We're going to add a few different items to this view. First, we want to do a image view. And again, we can type in the filter and we just say image view and notice it comes up. So we click and drag and let's go ahead and set this here at the top. Now we want to add a label. So this label come back here. I'm going to just start typing, go to label, click a label, and we'll just put it below this item here. Next, we want a button. And we say button. And we want two buttons. So here's the first button. And here is the next button. Now we want to use some auto layout in order to line these up. Remember when you place items on the view controller by default, they're going to always be at that same location regardless of the, of the device. We want to use auto layout to make it adaptive. When you use an image view, the image view object will load an image and re resize itself to fit the image. Now, in this instance, we don't want to do that. We want a fixed size. So if to do that, go ahead and select the UI image view. Come off over here, and we're going to check out the size inspector. And we want to give this a width and a height of 140 by 140. And now this has equal width and height. If we're going to add a constraint for this, we want to make sure that this doesn't change. So to do that, we come over here to this other button that says add new constraints and we select that. And here we have the option to lock in the width and the height. Go ahead and select those two and make sure you click add to constraints. All right. Now notice here that it's showing red. What this is saying is auto layout doesn't have enough information to resolve where this is going to show up on different devices. All we've done is add a constraint that says, hey, I want the height and width to be correct. If I come over here and I scroll over and see that, you've got this constraints, but you've only got width and height. That's not enough information for it to respond to all scenarios. So what we're missing is the horizontal and vertical. Right now, we're not going to fix that. What we're going to do is use a different mechanism to put th all of these elements in what we call a stack. And then we're going to horizontally and vertically align the stack so that all of these objects are centered together, meaning I want this object in relation to this one and to this one and this one. Together, they're going to be in a group. And then as a whole, that group will be centered or however we want to do it. 
let's configure the label. Let's select that. Come back over, select the attributes. Here we're going to change the font size. If I come over here and I click this T for the font, it'll bring up all the options. Let's go ahead and set that to 24 and then click Done. Now let's change the text that goes in the label and this is going to be called the answer label. Now notice that it's 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 uh, not fitting and it's not centered. We're not going to we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We'll fix that a little bit later. Go ahead and select a button and let's change the title of this button and it's going to be called show answer and then select the next button and this is called next element okay now we have these set up we want to add them to what we call a stack view so go ahead and select each one of these if you hold shift and click you can select multiple items notice how they're all selected if i click away i can select and press shift and i can select if i just want a few items or if I want all of them I can select it. Alright, now the next thing, notice over here on this bottom we saw this other button called Embed in Stack. So go ahead and click that and notice what happens. It creates what we call a stack view and if I twirl this open you see all of the elements that are associated within this view. And it also sized everything so that it would fit. At this point, we can now set some constraints for the entire stack, so everything that is contained, so that it will be aligned horizontally or vertically depending on what we do. The thing you want to do is select the stack itself. If I were to click away, sometimes notice how when I click in, I'm, I'm selecting individual elements. I don't want that. What I want is the entire stack, so I can select it over here. and. From this point, we go back to what we've seen already, which is to align, and we say horizontal center and horizontal and vertically center. So now we click add to constraints and it automatically updates, and now it's aligned the way we want. Everything in the stack view is kind of squished together, and we want to fix that. With the stack view selected, let's go back to the attribute inspector, and notice we have a few options here. We can say alignment. We can change the alignment to center, which means everything is centered. And then we can do distribution, which means just fill the available space. And then we can add more spacing to give ourselves some room, because right now everything's a little squished. So let's change that to 12. And now we've given ourselves a lot more room. Let's see how this looks when we switch different devices. If I change to landscape, notice how it fits nicely. Go back to portrait. I can choose different devices and it automatically lays it out exactly how we want it. Awesome. Very good. Let's go back to the 4S. Okay, we need some images. If you remember, we've talked about the folder. In the 18 folder, there's the resources. We have here under element quiz a number of images. In order to reference these images, we need to add them to our assets folder. If I click over here back to Xcode, go ahead and select the assets.xc assets. This is a special folder that does a number of things for us. And all I have to do is I go back to my folder, I select all of these images holding shift and then I select the bottom one. Now I click and drag here and it brings everything in and it gives it its own name and grouping. Perfect. So these image sizes will fit and support all the devices that we want to build for. Let's go back to the main dot storyboard. We've got our layout the way we want everything here. Now we need to 
add some outlets as well as some actions in order to make this respond to this code and do what we want. If you remember from the previous videos, you go up to the assistant editor and this pulls up the file that relates to this view controller. So in this view controller, this is the file that we're referring to and it shows up here on the right. And let's go ahead and add a couple of outlets first for the image view. I want to select the image view now here. It's important that you're only selecting the image view. Press control, click and drag and let's insert an outlet. Let's call this image view and then you can press return to connect that. I want to click in here, give myself a couple of lines so we have some space. And let's go for the answer label, select that, press control, click and drag and release it and let's call this answer label. Click return. Now we need a couple of actions for these buttons. So we have the show answer button and let's click hold down control, click and drag and let's release this down below. And remember to change this. We're going to change this to an action and we're going to go call this show answer. And then finally under next element, control, hold down control, click, drag, and release. And we'll call this go to next element. And make sure we select action and then click connect. Awesome. In the next video we'll update the code and finish this app.